Hey everybody, it's Brooke from Cog Hill, Mrs. Cog Hill Farm. Don't let me forget that Mrs. Um, a lot of you guys have been asking about the produce slash egg stand that we have out by the road. And today, I'm going to show y'all just how that's going. But before I do that, I have been wanting to try something that I hope you will be interested in watching. And that is to freeze dry some pickles. Now, I don't really know how this is going to turn out. I'm not a big pickle fan. Jason, Mary Carl, on the other hand, they are. But when things change in the freeze dryer, I have a tendency to like it a little bit more. So I'm gonna give pickles a try in the freeze dryer and just see how they come out. I'm thinking it's gonna be like a potato chip. I'm not for sure, but we're about to find out. So what I've done here is I've taken the juice and drained it off of the pickles. So they're not gonna be sitting in liquid when I put them on my trays. And I'm just simply gonna line them all up on my trays what Jason and I have found in our little bit of freeze drying experience that we have is that if something contains moisture, not like peeps because peeps are dry, but if something contains moisture, uh, if you pre-freeze it, you can do that, pre-freeze it. And then when you go to pop it in the freeze dryer, you set to pre-frozen, already frozen. It takes a lot of time off and it doesn't make your process take so long. So before I take you guys out and show you the egg stand and the produce stand and what's going on with that, we're gonna pop these in the freezer so we can have them pre-frozen to go in the freeze dryer when I get finished showing y'all that. Got all the pickles put on the sheets. And even though I drained them, there's a lot of moisture still in them. So I don't know if this is gonna help or not, but it can't hurt. So I'm just gonna take a paper towel and just blot the top of them to try to remove as much of that moisture that's just oh, brought a pickle with me. Look, that worked, that worked great. So I'm gonna turn the paper towel over, waste not, won't not, right? Do that. And you can see the amount of moisture because it is a pickle. And if this works out, it's gonna make a really healthy snack for us. We can just pop them in a bag and take them with us wherever we go. We don't have to worry about stopping to pick up something we shouldn't. All right, so now I'm gonna go outside to the garage where our second freezer is. I don't have room in my freezer in here, but. We do have a second refrigerator in the garage that has a small freezer on top. So I'm gonna take these outside and just pop them in while I go show you guys the egg stand. Did y'all hear that? Listen, do you hear that? We're gonna talk about that after I go show you the egg stand and get the pickles in the freezer. Here's our little garage fridge, freeze combo. And I am hoping that I can get all four trays in here. That's okay. Look at there. All right, so we're just gonna let those freeze. In the meantime, come with me. All right. So here's our little refrigerator, which we plan to move to the top. We Oh my gosh, guess what? Guess what, y'all? This is wonderful, because the fridge is empty. <laughs> so y'all know what this means? So y'all know what this means? This means the egg stand is going fantastic. This is, this is great. We've been finding that people locally have found the stand and they are so happy that we're selling fresh eggs right out here by the roadside. I didn't even bring my keys. A lot of you guys don't realize that there is a lock on this box. However, if somebody wanted it bad enough, they could just take it right off the 
the screw and take the whole box with them. But let's look down in there and see. I didn't bring the keys with me, but I, I bet you, bet you money, there's going to be $32 in there. So that means I got to go back home. At least I got a bike to ride on. That means I got to go back home and get the keys to come get the money out. And I also got to replace the eggs. Yay! It's a good thing that I brought my egg basket with me on my bicycle because I definitely need to gather and replenish the egg stand before I go back home. First thing we gotta do is cut the cements off. Y'all look at Big Cheese. He just walked around to the underside of the bus, but he's got him a pool out here. We haven't actually seen him in the pool, but we know that we're doing the right thing by at least offering him a pool. Hey, Cheese! Come here, baby! Look at you all grown up! And everything's going well. You can see there's a bunch of Rhode Island red hens right here. And I'm seeing a lot of the same color except for the olive they're not olive eggers they're easter eggers Let's see if i can get a shot of some of those they may be inside they haven't started laying yet but any day now we expect to see an egg from those girls so let me go inside and see what see what kind of eggs we have all right so this little girl i hope she's not broody we don't want any chickens sitting on eggs in here we gather every day, but still, I just don't want, don't want any chicken sitting. Maybe she's just laying. Let's see how many we come out, come up with underneath her. She's not done yet. Let's see. So there's six total under her. All right, girl, you lay your egg and get on up, okay? We're not going to have any of that broodiness going on in the bus. That's a Silky's job. Yes, you are beautiful though. And what are you doing, girl? You gonna come see me? And on down, I see three more. So that's nine. Here's one, 10, 11, 13, and I'm going to show you all this because if you haven't been keeping chickens or you don't know much about chickens, you're about to learn. And that is, they all want to lay in one particular box. Just like they were sit, there were six eggs under that one hen. In this box, that's 16, that's 20. All right, we got 22 eggs today. So, my math's correct. That's gonna almost pull up, fill up two cartons. So if we get two dozen eggs a day, that's 14 dozen eggs in a week, approximately. And we're, we're on to a jam up thing here by putting the egg stand out by the road. Cause I, like I said earlier, I think the community's loving it. And to have farm fresh eggs and know where they come from and People can even see the chickens out here free ranging. And then they get this beautiful array of eggs. Now, I didn't see a blue egg today. And that means that Emma Jean, who is our lavender Americana, has not laid. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Got one more. One more I missed. So, um, Emma Jean, I don't know where you are, girl, but you got to pick it up a little bit. All these girls are doing your work. So now I'm gonna head back and I'm gonna take these eggs and I'm gonna carton them up, get them back to the refrigerator. But I wanna show you what all that peeping was about that you heard earlier when I went to take the pickles to the freezer. I just came outside and as soon as I stepped down the stairs, who do I see? Miss Emma Jean looking beautiful. You are a beautiful girl. You just hadn't laid any eggs today. That's okay. Maybe it's just not the right time for her yet. Cheese, you gotta do a little talking to her. Tell her blue, blue sure does look beautiful in that mix of brown. 
So there, I got my eggs hanging on my handlebars, and I just hope I make it back without a broken one. Okay, so I'm back in the house with the eggs, and a lot of people have asked, how do we clean our eggs? And y'all, they stay very clean. And the tip to that is keeping your nesting boxes clean. If you keep your nesting boxes clean, then the hard work it is over for you because you might only have just this one little spot right there. You see it? I just got a paper towel and I wiped it off and I'll dry it off and put it in the carton and so forth and so on. This one is just got a little, I just don't want anybody to get that and think that that egg is nasty. But I don't even have to do anything to them. They're just, they're very clean. And that is all just, a, that, that's according to what you do to keep your coop clean. A clean coop equals clean eggs. Clean nesting boxes. I, I mean, that's not like it's species. It's just a little bit of residue from the nesting material. So, and we do refrigerate them. After you refrigerate them, you do not need to put them back out on the counter. The only reason that we leave eggs on the counter is if they haven't been washed at all and that bloom has not been affected. But once they go in, they can't come back out. When I got to the bottom of the basket, I must report some bad news. These two eggs were cracked. That means that I can no longer ride my bike to get eggs. I've had a long day already and I just thought, I know I need to exercise, but I was tired and I just thought I'd ride on the bike and, and, and get eggs and save myself a few steps, but that's not good. So that can only mean one thing. I gotta cook these here next in the, in the next few minutes. So they won't go to waste. I may even cook them and give them to Rocky and Bandit because I've already had my lunch. So this is what I was talking about when we came to the freezer to put the pickles in. I've got a little problem here and it's not so much of a problem because if y'all just went with me to replenish the refrigerator, I'm on the right path because I have a lot of new chicks. And, and they're not they're not just brand new. They ate all their food, so I need to replenish that. I've been hiding them in the garage for a while now. Probably for about six weeks, don't you think, Jason? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so I'm gonna give y'all the lowdown on what I got going on. You see that polka dotted looking one? Not the one with the neck and neck. That was a hatch from Codfield that wasn't supposed to hatch. That polka dotted one. That is your old timey, what you call a Dominique. And it looks kind of like a barn rock, but they are an old breed that has a tighter pattern than a barn rock, but has a very good temperament. So I'm happy to have those. I think I have two of those. Then I have, let's see. I have what is known as a pendant sinka. If y'all followed us at, your, at our old farm, we did have some of these. They lived out their life there, and they were not they were not with us when we made the move. But that's gonna be that girl right there. I don't know if you can even see her, but there, she's gonna lay a really dark egg. And when I brought the eggs up here and showed you my menagerie of colors, I have a lot of shades of brown. And then I have the Easter eggers that are already in the bus, just waiting on their day to come before they can start laying. So this darker brown egg is going to make that carton even more vibrant. Come here, babies, come here. And they're still kind of scared because they've been in the brooder, so I haven't been able to handle them much. Um, I wish, I wish the next one I want to talk about would come up to the front so you could see, but she's under the heater there. She's black and she's got some gold under on her. Not that girl. Um, anyway, that is what is your gold lace wand dot. 
So they're gonna be a beautiful color and they lay, lay a beautiful brown shade. Um, now my favorite that I have in here, my favorite, I shouldn't have favorite, should I? My favorite is the Buff Orphington. And that is going to be those two girls that are back there in the corner. They're a really light brown color. And I don't know what makes them one of my favorite breeds, but they are just docile and they're beautiful and they're prolific layers. So with those three categories going on, how could you not love the Buff Orpington breed? Girl, I'm not gonna get you. But what I've gotta do today is I've got to gather all these girls. I know it's your first time seeing them, but you're gonna see them get moved into their temporary housing, which you've seen us do this time and time again. That is move them to the bus, the Coghill School Bus. We have that area built onto the back where our layers can get used to them by seeing them, but they can't touch them and show their dominance because they're fully feathered. But at this age, they're vulnerable. And the reason being, it's because they're so small. And a, a large hen, even though we don't have any aggressive chickens, is gonna try to show its dominance. So we always like to get those girls used to each other, kind of through the fence, so to speak, before we put them with the experienced girls that have lived in there all their life. But y'all come with me and I'm gonna pack these girls up, move them to the bus. But before I do that, I wanna check on the pickles in the freezer and see if they're frozen to the point where I can go ahead and put them in the freeze dryer and get a jump start on that. So I'm gonna go wash my hands and I'm gonna shut you girls up for just a few minutes while I take care of an errand and I look at them. They look like, they're, they look like I'm reading them a book. Okay, is that okay if I go check on the pickles and then I come back and get you girls? Cause look, look at this one back here. I got big plans for y'all today. You better put your boots on or your high heels, whatever you prefer. I'm a boots girl. Guess what? I have frozen pickles and I wanna show y'all how frozen they are. Mm -hmm. You can jiggle them and they don't fall off. So to the freeze dryer they go. Okay, so into the freeze dryer go my frozen pickles. Okay, so shut the door. And this is where you've got to make a decision. You mash start. Pre-frozen, not frozen. This is pre-frozen. So that means that takes all of that freeze time away because it's just gonna start from frozen and do its thing. So we got the pickles in. Now I gotta move some chicks. All right, all the girls are loaded and I put them in my car. I don't think I could ride these on the bicycle. So Jason's gonna go with me and we're gonna get them set up in the school bus. At this point, it's looking like I may need a fleet of school buses. Is that even plural for bus, buses? Yeah, and a perch to learn and some new chickens to get used to. Y'all are gonna be so much better out here than you were. Cold weather is gone. So show them on a Dominica or a Dominique. Oh, it's okay. They got rose cones. A rose cone. And I'll try to get into that on another video, but chickens have different types of cones, and that is the red part that's on top of their head. Different shapes. I hope you're not counting. I wasn't counting. Good. <laughs> I might get in trouble. <laughs> oh, we ain't got no guineas. Our turkeys yeah. are good. You don't have to worry about guineas, guineas coming here. We have enough turkeys, so. Oh, don't they look beautiful. All right, All right girls, I'm gonna get y'all a feeder and a water set up. Your feeder and your water's in there. And I hope you're gonna enjoy your new living quarters. And it won't be long bef before y'all will be out here mingling with the girls and in these wonderful laying boxes. Oh, so when I gathered earlier, you saw the mosaic hen that was in the box and I thought she might be broody, but she's not there now. And that to me tells me she's not broody because 
Diane's in the box now. But I did take all the eggs, so. Fingers crossed she's not Rudy. Hey, Diane. <laughs> Process complete. Process complete. We gotta open the drain valve first. Yep. Oops, sorry. It's okay. It's not, no water's gonna come out right now, it's air. No, it's too much pressure suction. One day I came out here and my mind wasn't working right. Yeah. And I'm, <laughs> I told Jason, I said, something's not right. I can't open the door. Yep. He said, did you undo the vacuum? Yeah. And I didn't. So. It's a huge vacuum. And that's because the, the Harbor Strike freeze dryer comes with this pump. And that's all part of the process of freeze drying. So now that suction is released. It's still a little bit. You know, stuck on the woo. <laughs> you can select to warm the trays, which would take all this coldness away, but I don't have time because I need to know what they're like. <laughs> I like them. I like them too. <laughs> oh my gracious. Get these things in the house. That is good. I will say, like everything else, since there's no water in it, all the water content's gone. And that's why it sounds like a potato chip or a piece of styrofoam or a Lucky Charms marshmallow. That's what we always say. Like, the flavor is intense. You know what I thought? What? When we were putting them in there, I thought that we would need to add some salt. Yeah. Because I thought that in order for it to taste like a chip, it would need to, to have more no. salt added. It's perfect just it the way is. it is. It is. It is a very intense dill pickle flavor. Oh, y'all. You didn't see me eating this many. I wonder what it'd be like Hold if on. you air fried some of them. I don't know. That just got me curious. But anyways, do well, you even put them on salads? We know what they're like now. Yeah. And, you know, if you're like a prepper and you want to, we'll have to go put these in some water and yeah, see what. Let's, let's do, do that. that. Let's, let's do, do that. that. Yeah, that's the thing about freeze drying is, as you can see, the flavor doesn't change or makes it intense right now because there's no water. Doesn't lose any of the nutritional value either versus dehydrating. Dehydrating is a totally different process than freeze drying. And they will last up to 25 years and never lose its flavor or nutritional value. And if you add water, it reconstitutes it back to its original state. Back to and a pickle. And we tend to do things to see what it's like when it's freeze dried. Yeah. But the whole purpose of it is preservation. That's right. So you can, you know, make these last, like Jason said, up to 25 years. But if you want to rehydrate it, then let's go see what that will be Let's like. go do it. So I have a little bowl of water here and I just filled it. Well, not filled it, but put a little bit of cold water in the bottom. And I just want to see what happens. These two that were the oldest? Yeah, I put two more in there, but oh, because you can see a huge difference in the color. I don't know if you can on camera or not. They're real light on here, but now they look like Ooh, pickles. Ooh, it's squishy again. Is it like a pickle again? All right, should I try it? Go ahead and try it. Guess what? It's like a pickle. It's like a original pickle. Yep. I'm glad we did that. Yeah, me too. But I do like them better freeze dried. They are. I just don't like them. I don't like the gooey texture. I like the crunchy texture. And I think that's why you like freeze-dried figs versus fresh figs. I think so, too. And it's mm -hmm. just a personal preference. I mean, everybody's different. Mm -hmm. If we weren't, the world would be pretty boring. That's right. And we just keep them in Ziploc bags and enjoy them as need be. So, if you guys are interested in a Harvest Right freeze-dryer, then I will put a link down below. And if you do use our link, we do get a small commission at no extra cost to you guys. And it does help our farm and channel out a lot. Um, we're loving ours. Absolutely loving our ours. So stay tuned and see what we do next with our freeze dryer. And leave comments down below of what you want us to uh, freeze dry and see what it's like. <laughs>